What's good, everybody? I'm the G with a PhD, and you're tuned in to the Green Gorilla Channel, the place where black men can express themselves freely, straight up, no chaser. What I'm going to do is offer a series of videos dealing with the subject matter of the philosophy of science. Now, I'm doing this because I think it'll be useful to us in the manosphere, because we often make data-driven arguments and factual claims about the world, both the physical world and the social world, without having a deep-seated understanding of the scientific method or its strengths or weaknesses. So the first few videos I'm going to make open to all of my subscribers, but the rest of the video series will be available to members only and will be found either on my members only list on YouTube or my Patreon page. The text I'm going to be using is entitled Understanding the Philosophy of Science and is written by James Ladyman. The text can be found online for free and it's easy to read and accessible. So let's get started. Now some features and functions of human life stay the same. People have to work to survive. Also, some people are wealthy and some people are poor. We haven't been able to eliminate war and conflict and there is an eradicable cycle of birth, life, and death. But some things are different. We can now communicate with people hundreds, thousands of miles away. We know that the earth is not flat. We can transmit music over radio waves. We have televisions and cable and satellite content providers. We use computers to do research, homework, and to play games. We use antibiotics and antiviral medications to prevent the spread of deadly diseases. We also have weapons of mass destruction that potentially threaten all life on the planet. And what's the difference? The difference is science, because without it, there is no cutting edge technology, no electronics, no satellites, nuclear weapons, advanced surgery, or Wi-Fi. Now this is not to say that human beings haven't created inventions without the aid of science. The wheel was revolutionary. The plow also revolutionary. And one could argue Nothing was more revolutionary than man's finally harnessing the use of fire. And the building and uh, erection of homes was also something revolutionary, and it took place without the aid of science. But one thing about science is that it's held in high regard. It's perceived as more prestigious than the humanities, even philosophy. Scientists are taken seriously unlike, for example, lawyers, who are often scoffed at and looked at as useless and as exploitative. Science is perceived as an objective as opposed to a subjective enterprise. It's perceived and looked upon as rational, and scientific conclusions are usually perceived as proven to be true due to scientific evidence, not mere opinion. So ultimately, we have faith in science and in scientists. We have faith that forensic scientists explain the facts about a crime scene. We have faith that ballistic experts are able to determine the trajectory of bullets. We listen to our doctors and regard them as experts about our bodies. We listen to what the administrators and the FDA have to say about drugs and their safety or harmfulness. In fact, it's just true. We rely on science-based information. But the question is, what do we actually know about science? Most of us know very little. Why? Because science is a specialized enterprise, and the specialization makes overall scientific knowledge impossible. I mean, like how many different scientific fields are there? <laughs> there are many. But still, we rely on the coordination of many people with different kinds of scientific knowledge to use and advance scientific thought. But there are some universal features of science that we can learn that don't require scientific expertise. Now briefly, I'm gonna tell you what the philosophy of science is not. It's not scientific ethics. We're not gonna be investigating the rightness or wrongness of animal or human experimentation. We're not gonna be determining uh, whether it's right or wrong to build nuclear weapons 
whether it's right or wrong for people to engage in euthanasia. We're also not going to talk about scientific funding, like what projects are worthy of financing and, and those that are not. That's not what we're about to do. So what is then the aim of the philosophy of science? Well, it's simple. To answer the question, well, what is science? Are the claims that we believe to be scientific really scientific? And this leads us to a very important problem in the philosophy of science called the demarcation problem, which concerns determining what is and what is not Science, for example, is astrology science? Is chemistry science? Is biology science? Is psychoanalysis science? Is creationism science? Ultimately, the aim of the philosophy of science is the study of the scientific method itself. Yes, it's a pretty heady enterprise, a pretty heady endeavor. But nonetheless, it's an important and vital, critical component of knowing how to make good arguments about nature and social life. So, until the next time, be easy, be peaceful. One.